Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Daniel and today we have some breaking news that's going to impact millions of Canadians. Finance Minister Christia Freeland has just announced significant changes to the Canada Pension Plan for 2024 and it's something you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Before we dive into the details, let's take a moment to understand why this announcement is so important. The Canada Pension Plan, or CPP, has been a cornerstone of retirement planning for Canadians since its inception in 1965. It's designed to provide a stable source of income for retirees, helping to ensure that hardworking Canadians can enjoy their golden years with financial security. However, in recent years we've seen unprecedented economic challenges. The cost of living has been rising faster than many people's incomes, and retirees on fixed incomes have been feeling the squeeze. From groceries to housing, healthcare to transportation, the expenses keep piling up, and many seniors have been struggling to make ends meet. That's where this new announcement comes in. Minister Freeland and the Canadian government have recognized these challenges and have decided to take action. The headline of this announcement is a confirmed $1,600 boost coming this month for all CPP recipients. Yes, you heard that right, $1,600 for every single person currently receiving CPP payments. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what this means for you or your loved ones who are CPP recipients, we'll explore the details of the payment, how it will be distributed, and what it means for your overall financial picture. We'll also look at the broader context of CPP changes for 2024 and what you can expect in the coming year. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's dive into this game-changing announcement for Canadian pensioners. Main content. Let's start with the big news, the $1,600 boost. This is a one-time payment that will be distributed to all current CPP recipients. Here's what you need to know. First and foremost, this is a one-time payment, not a monthly increase. It's designed to provide immediate relief to pensioners facing financial pressures. The government has confirmed that this $1,600 will be automatically deposited into the accounts of all current CPP recipients. This means you don't need to apply or fill out any forms if you're currently receiving CPP payments. You'll automatically receive this boost. One of the most significant aspects of this payment is that it's tax-free. This means that the full $1,600 will be yours to use as you see fit, without having to set aside a portion for taxes. This is a departure from regular CPP payments, which are considered taxable income. Now, you might be wondering about the timing. Minister Freeland has stated that this payment will be coming this month while an exact date hasn't been provided. We can expect to see these deposits hitting bank accounts within the next few weeks. The government has assured that they're working to distribute these funds as quickly as possible, recognizing the urgent need for financial relief among many seniors. It's worth noting that this boost is being provided to all CPP recipients, regardless of the amount of their regular CPP pay payments. Whether you receive the maximum CPP payment or a partial payment, you'll still get the full $1,600 boost. This universal approach ensures that all Canadian pensioners will benefit from this initiative. For those of you who might be receiving other forms of government assistance, such as Old Age Security OAAs or the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs, don't worry the CPP boost will not affect your eligibility or payment amounts for these other programs. It's a standalone payment designed to supplement, not replace, existing support systems. Lastly, it's important to understand that this $1,600 boost is separate from the annual cost of living adjustments to CPP payments. Those adjustments, which are based on the Consumer Price Index and designed to help CPP keep P pace with inflation, will continue as usual. We'll talk more about those adjustments later in the video. $1,600, tax-free, automatically deposited, coming this month, for all CPP recipients. It's a significant boost that could make a real difference in the lives of many Canadian seniors. To truly understand the significance of this $1,600 boost, we need to look at the broader context. Why has the government decided to implement this measure and why now? The answer lies in the economic challenges that Canada, like many countries around the world, has been facing. Over the past few years, we've seen a perfect storm of economic pressures. 
the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted supply chains and changed consumption patterns. Global conflicts have impacted energy prices. Climate-related events have affected food production. All of these factors have contributed to inflation rates that we haven't seen in decades. For retirees on fixed incomes, this inflationary environment has been particularly challenging. While CPP payments do have built-in cost-of-living adjustments, these increases often lag behind real-world price increases. This means that many seniors have been seeing their purchasing power erode month after month. Minister Freeland addressed this directly in her announcement, stating, We recognize the financial challenges many of our seniors are facing. This boost to CPP is designed to provide immediate relief. The key word here is immediate the government has chosen to provide this lump sum payment as a way to get funds into the hands of seniors quickly, rather than implementing a more gradual increase that might take months or years to have a significant impact. It's also worth noting that this boost comes in the context of broader discussions about retirement security in Canada. With an aging population and increasing life expectancies, ensuring that Canadians have adequate income in retirement has become a pressing policy issue. This $1,600 boost, while a one-time measure, signals that the government is attuned to these concerns and is willing to take action to support retirees. Moreover, this boost can be seen as part of a larger economic strategy. By putting additional funds into the hands of seniors, the government is not only providing relief to this specific group, but also injecting money into the broader economy. Seniors are likely to spend this money on goods and services, which can help stimulate economic activity. In short, this $1,600 boost is a response to immediate economic pressures, a recognition of the unique challenges faced by retirees, and part of a broader strategy to support both seniors and the Canadian economy as a whole. Now that we understand the what and the why of this $1,600 boost, let's talk about what it could mean for individual pensioners. How might this extra money impact the lives of Canadian seniors? First and foremost, $1,600 is a significant sum that could make a real difference in many people's lives. For some, it might mean being able to catch up on bills that have been piling up. For others, it could provide an opportunity to make necessary home repairs or medical purchases that have been put off due to budget constraints. Let's look at some specific examples. For a senior living in a city with high housing costs, $1,600 could cover a month or more of rent, providing breathing room in a tight budget. In Toronto or Vancouver, where average rents for a one-bedroom apartment can exceed $2,000, this boost could significantly ease housing cost burdens. For those dealing with high healthcare expenses not covered by provincial health plans, $1,600 could cover the cost of new eyeglasses, hearing aids, or dental work. These are often significant expenses for seniors that can impact quality of life when left unaddressed. In terms of daily living expenses, $1,600 could cover several months of groceries for an individual or couple, especially important given the rising food costs we've seen recently. According to Statistics Canada, the average Canadian household spends about $800 per month on food, so this boost could provide substantial relief in this essential expense category. For seniors who have been putting off home maintenance due to budget constraints, $1,600 could cover the cost of minor repairs or energy efficiency upgrades. This could not only improve living conditions but potentially lead to long-term savings on utility bills. It's also worth considering the psychological impact of this boost. Financial stress can take a significant toll on mental health, especially for those living on fixed incomes. The knowledge that this extra $1,600 is coming could provide peace of mind and reduce anxiety about making ends meet. However, it's important to note that while $1,600 is a substantial amount, it's not a long-term solution to the financial challenges many seniors face. It's a one-time payment, and once it's spent, pensioners will still need to navigate the ongoing challenges of living on a fixed income in an inflationary environment. That's why it's crucial for recipients to think carefully about how to use this money. While it might be tempting to splurge on a luxury item or a nice vacation, for many the most prudent approach will be to use this boost to shore up their financial situation. This might mean paying down high interest debt, building up an emergency fund, or investing in items that could lead to long-term savings. Ultimately, the impact of this $1,600 boost will vary depending on each individual's financial situation. For some, it will provide much-needed relief from immediate financial pressures. For others, it might offer an opportunity to make quality-of-life improvements that have been out of reach. In all cases, it represents a significant, if temporary, boost to the financial resources of Canadian pensioners. 
While the $1,600 boost is the headline news, it's important to understand that it's just one part of a broader set of changes to the CPP for 2024. Let's take a look at some of the other adjustments that will impact pensioners in the coming year. First, let's talk about the annual cost of living adjustment. Each January, CPP payments are adjusted based on the Consumer Price Index CPI to help benefits keep pace with inflation. For 2024, this adjustment is particularly significant the CPP payment amounts will increase by 4.4% for those already receiving CPP payments. This is one of the largest increases in recent years, reflecting the high inflation rates we've been experiencing. What does this mean in practical terms? Let's break it down. If you're receiving the maximum CPP retirement pension at age 65, your monthly payment will increase from $1,306.57 in 2023 to $1,364.06 in 2024. That's an additional $57.49 per month or $689.88 per month or $689.88 per year. For those receiving the average CPP retirement pension, which is about $750 per month, the 4.4% increase will mean an extra $33 per month or $396 per year. It's important to note that this increase is separate from and in addition to the $1,601 time boost we discussed earlier. Another significant change for 2024 is an increase in the maximum pensionable earnings. This is the maximum amount of earnings on which you can contribute to the CPP. For 2024, this amount will increase from $66,600 to $68,500. This change primarily affects those still working and contributing to the CPP, but it's important for future planning. The basic exemption amount, which is the amount of earnings on which you don't contribute to the CPP, will remain unchanged at $3,500 for 2024. For those still working and contributing to the CPP, the contribution rates will also see a slight increase. In 2024, the employee and employer contribution rates for the base CPP will each increase from 5.95% to 6.0% for self-employed individuals who pay both the employee and employer portions the total contribution rate will increase from 11.9% to 12.0%. These increases are part of the planned gradual enhancement of the CPP that began in 2019. The goal of this enhancement is to increase the amount of retirement, disability, and survivor benefits that Canadians will receive in the future. It's also worth noting that the eligibility criteria for CPP remain unchanged for 2024. You can still start receiving your CPP retirement pension as early as age 60, or as late as age 70. Remember, if you choose to start your pension before age 65, it will be reduced by 0.6% for each month you receive it before your 65th birthday. If you delay receiving your pension past age 65, it will be increased by 0.7% for each month you delay up to age 70. For those considering applying for CPP disability benefits, the eligibility criteria and payment amounts are also being adjusted for inflation in 2024. The maximum monthly amount for the CPP disability pension will increase to $1,587.67, up from $1,538.67 in 2023. All of these changes the cost of living adjustment, the increase in maximum pensionable earnings, the slight bump in contribution rates, and the adjustments to disability benefits work together with the $1,600 boost to provide a more comprehensive support system for Canadian pensioners and future retirees. It's crucial to understand these changes in their entirety, as they can have significant impacts on your retirement planning and your current financial situation if you're already receiving CPP benefits. While the one-time $1,600 boost provides immediate relief, these other changes will have longer-term effects on the CPP system and its beneficiaries. Now that we've covered the details of the $1,600 boost and the other CPP changes for 2024, Let's consider some of the potential implications and important considerations for pensioners and future retirees. 
First, it's crucial to recognize that while the $1,600 boost and the 4.4% cost of living increase are significant, they may not fully offset the impact of inflation for all seniors. The official inflation rate doesn't always reflect the real-world price increases that individuals experience, especially for essentials like food and housing. Pensioners should continue to monitor their expenses carefully and adjust their budgets as needed. Second, these changes highlight the importance of understanding and maximizing your CPP benefits. If you're approaching retirement age, it's worth considering how the timing of when you start receiving CPP can impact your benefits. Delaying CPP can result in higher monthly payments, which can be especially valuable in an inflationary environment. Third, the $1,600 boost and other CPP enhancements should not be seen as a replacement for personal savings and other sources of retirement income. While the CPP is an important pillar of retirement security in Canada, it's designed to replace only a portion of your pre-retirement earnings. Continuing to save through vehicles like RSPs and TFSEs remains crucial for ensuring a comfortable retirement. Fourth, these changes to the CPP may have implications for your overall tax planning. While the $1,600 boost is tax-free, regular CPP payments are considered taxable income. The 4.4% increase in CPP payments for 2024 could potentially push some seniors into a higher tax bracket. It's worth consulting with a financial advisor or tax professional to understand how these changes might impact your overall tax situation. Fifth, for those still working and contributing to the CPP, the increase in the maximum pensionable earnings and contribution rates means you may be putting more into the system. While this can lead to higher benefits in the future, it also means slightly lower take-home pay in the short term. Factor this into your budgeting and financial planning. Sixth, these changes to the CPP, particularly the $1,600 boost, may impact eligibility for other income-tested benefits and credits. While the boost itself won't affect other benefits, the overall increase in income could potentially impact things like the guaranteed income supplement or various provincial benefits. Be sure to check how your other benefits might be affected. Lastly, it's important to view these changes in the context of your overall retirement and financial plan. While the $1,600 boost provides immediate relief and the other changes enhance the long-term stability of the CPP, they don't negate the need for comprehensive retirement planning. This includes considering factors like your expected expenses in retirement, your health and potential healthcare costs, your desired lifestyle, and other sources of income and savings. In conclusion, while these changes to the CPP for 2024, especially the $1,600 boost, are generally positive developments for Canadian pensioners, they also serve as a reminder of the complexity of